Okay, so today we're going to be replacing the AC condenser coil. Um, the story behind mine is about three years ago a rock came up and hit mine and broke it. And I ordered one off the internet and what happened was they sent me the wrong model. The next day I, after I got it I was supposed to take a 500 mile trip and instead of doing it with no AC I made this one work but it didn't fit right and it rubbed and it's got a hole in it so now I got the right one so I'm going to be putting the right one on changing it is not that hard um, pretty much anybody can do it and I'm going to go over the correct way to charge them and the different options you have of charging it back again so make sure you watch the whole thing and first thing we got to do simple nut here we take this nut loose and it'll give us a little bit of slack so we'll take that loose and then i'll move on and we'll see what's next so with the nut loose um now it's the time to take a look there's a rubber o-ring here make sure your o-ring's in good shape it doesn't hurt to put a new one on um if your o-ring's got any kind of nick or anything like that in there because it seals inside here it will leak uh next thing we got to do is you can pick yourself up one of these uh, little kits they're you know like under ten dollars at your local auto parts store a pair of pliers like this and what happens is you put this up under on there and then you got to kind of work it in there you got to find the right one that fits and then you take the pliers and you squeeze the thing together now there's a spring inside there a round spring that when you sn snip it together the spring compresses and holds it in place so what you're actually doing is you're pushing this tool in there and you're spreading the spring apart once I get it apart I'll show you the spring um, it can be kind of difficult at times and you really it, it takes a little bit of patience you got to keep trying it and trying it and trying it they make better quality kits um, that cost money I mean it's one of those things these little plastic things work fine I mean if you're doing them every day you know you got to buy the more expensive kit anyway because they're not going to last but they'll work a couple times so it's it's up to you what you want to buy if you want to spend the extra money and get a good quality kit it might make your job a little bit easier but you do have to kind of work with it and then you notice my nuts are loose so once i get the spring spread out i can wiggle the whole thing and try to get it out of there anyway i'm gonna go ahead and do that next and i'll show you what i mean okay mine was a pain in the ass for only being on there three years um as you can see what you have here is i actually cut the coil off so i could get to it uh easier but i sprayed a little bit of wd up in there because i didn't know if that spring was rusted or what was going on it seemed to make it better but this little plastic part as you can see here actually pushes up against that lip and there's a spring inside that goes over that lip once you put it in so you're actually pushing the spring apart and then it should just pull out but anyway um i actually took my tube up out inside here be very careful if you do something like that uh just for the ease of getting to it is why i did it but this is all just soft aluminum and you can't kink it and it can break easy and when you put it back make sure it doesn't rub on anything you can see your rubber rings here make sure they're in good shape um, any place there's a nick or anything like that they will leak and inside here is what houses your spring and you, once you take it apart you can look up in there and you'll understand it better um, but what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and bolt i got the new coil here we're going to bolt that all up to the truck first so that's all bolted to the truck and then we're going to proceed on for the next part of it okay everything's bolted back in place it, like i say it's not that hard of a job as far as that goes um i just stuck on here it's finger tight stuck that back on now our line goes obviously down in there 
And what you do is you work it on all the way. Sometimes you're lucky the spring will just pop back on. Sometimes you're not. You have to put your little thing back on there and spread the spring and make sure it's on there. Now you want to yank up on it real hard and make sure it's on there tight because that's a high pressure line. And if it's not, the spring's not seated on there right, it will just pop right off. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do that next. And then we're going to go on to explaining the different options of charging it and the correct way to do it. Okay, everything's bolted back in place real nice and tight. Check everywhere. Make sure nothing's touching or rubbing. Um, if a tube is rubbing against your truck, it'll just wear a hole in it. I've replaced this one. It's expensive and it's a pain in the butt. Um, but check all the way back through your truck. Make sure nothing's rubbing. Um, charging. The correct way. I'm going to explain the correct way. The correct way is to use a vacuum pump and evacuate the system. Okay. And then you weigh the charge back in. Now, all our trucks say, you know, factory charge. It'll tell you how many pounds, blah, 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 blah. And if you do it like that, that is the correct way. Now, we all know they sell cans of Freon at your local auto parts store, Walmarts, wherever. And I've used them, and they work. Um, if you want your truck done exactly right, I suggest you take it somewhere and let them evacuate it and charge weigh the charge in. It'll be exactly right. Uh, that being said, you know, um, you can do it. Now, here's the thing. The way your system works is you have a compressor. The compressor compresses the gas and it turns into a hot gas. So what you're doing up here, you're pumping the hot gas through the coil, okay? And the air is cooling it off and it turns it into a liquid. The liquid goes through this line and you have like an orifice, almost works the same as a jet, an injector. Sprays the Freon, when it does that, it, it changes the chemical makeup and makes it cold. So when you charge them, you have to be careful because in the cans it's already compressed and it has liquid. And we all know liquid does not compress. So when you put it in there, you have to be sure that you're not dumping liquid on top of your compressor or it can blow the pistons out of your compressor. Um, so what you do is you add it in there real slow or you dump, you know, a half a pound or a pound in there. I think these trucks are about two pounds. Um, you know, they're all going to be different. You can read on there dump half the can in there and then wait about an hour and what will happen is the liquid will turn back into a vapor. Compressors can compress vapor. Okay, other than that you go real slow with it. You just dump it in there real slow. Now, ideally, you know, there's not going to be in an exact amount. You know when it's getting cold. You know, at an idle you should be running 30, 35 pounds on your you know, suction side if you get one with a little gauge on it. Uh, it's the best option anyway. And you know, you high idle it a couple times and make sure you know the Freon's all equaled out and working the way it should. Check it again. You should be right around 30, between 30 and 35. You should have a nice cold air coming out and you're probably close enough and it, it, it will probably work. You know, like I say, I've dumped stuff like that in mine before. I actually have a whole drum of 134A and the whole setup, so I, I can do mine right. I have a vacuum pump and everything. But anyway, I hope this helps you out. At least help you out understanding if you got a slow leak and you got to put Freon in it all the time. Be sure to subscribe and check out our website. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.